by uh, Dr. Liu Otamaki. I try hard to now finish it. And uh, uh, so Liu is a visiting scientist who stopped now working in our lab. He did a PhD degree in the uh, University of Guangzhou uh, in 2008 on the topic of improving pattern recognition methods for speaker recognition. And uh, he's now on the scholarship from the Academy of Finland uh, or to uh, attach to uh, ice cream for one year. And he's been here for six months. <laughs> so so uh, recently, uh, he did a work on the, the human, uh, human assisted speaker recognition task. So uh, I invited him to, to, to talk about uh, uh, the topic human versus machine in speaker recognition. This is a very interesting topic. Uh, and uh, let's welcome him. Thank you. Yeah, so, so this uh, kind of a working work in progress report, in a sense, or work, work in progress presentation on the on human versus machine. And uh, the, the uh, the primary goal is to, to work towards the uh, this 2010 speaker for the speaker recognition evaluation, and uh, in that evaluation, one, one part of the evaluation is to, to study the, the difference uh, how how can, can we like can we improve the recognition performance by by using humans also there, but we are of course interested also to, to study the the kind of uh, what is the gold standard in a sense like uh, the are, are humans still better than the than, than automatic systems or so on. Okay, so so speaker recognition, speaker verification, why why should we study it? And uh, there are of course numerous different applications and uh, one thing that is very close to the kind of human human recognition is the forensic speaker recognition. And uh, in that one forensic speaker recognition, you, uh, you have a forensic phonetician who is studying the speech samples. And the, the forensic phonetician is uh, many times actually doing so-called aural recognition, which is that just listening to those samples. The person has to decide whether the samples are from the same person. Well, of course, if we're, if we're studying the human performance, also we are studying at the same time. We are interested to study that how can we make it how can we make the automatic systems better? And are there something in the human performance that we can utilize? Some, something that we we kind of we get some new ideas how to how to uh, improve the automatic system. So the problem definition of of, uh, of the, the speaker verification automatic system is the the because uh, first of all we have the identification problem that uh, uh, the person uh, gives a speech sample and then the system has to decide who is it from the enrolled speakers. And then in the verification, verification phase or the task, the, uh, you are given a, a claim that you are a safe person and then the, uh, the system has to decide whether the claim was correct or incorrect. The identification system can be made of uh, the uh, if you have a database of n n rows speakers, you can do uh, identification by doing n times the verification. So you kind of uh, you you, you take the one claim at a time and you verify against all these all these uh, people, all these n rows speakers, and then you pick the one that uh, was the kind of highest give a highest likelihood. So that can be. So the identification, the ver verification is like the base, base problem, and that's what the, the uh, in the least evaluation also I studied only the verification, not the, not the identification. Even though identification many times could be more interesting from the application point of view. <coughs> okay, so speaker recognition system again is a, as you have a speech noise coming in, then you have some voice activity detection or of speech activity detection, <coughs> and then you do uh, processing from those speech, speech parts only. So you have some, some 
features that you extract, depending on which kind of features you have. And then you model those features. And if you have a, you, you are doing some test phase, then you, you do a resolution based on the, the features and you model them, uh, the claim model, and the, the scores and the output. If you are thinking about the human system, then again, the, in a human, you have a, a two different speed signals. You have a utterance one, utterance two, and you have to decide whether they are the same or not. The um, in this case, the the uh, you can see that the same same kind of thing like in the you have an automatic system is giving a score, the uh, sim score similarity. The uh, humans cannot give a uh, real number of scores; it's impossible. You uh, you cannot like uh, say that is uh, you cannot reliably that this was the uh, same person with the probability of 75% uh, or something like that. It's not the uh, human, human cannot do reliably that kind of uh, decision. So it's always a discrete. The score is always discrete. Um, but this we can see it in a sim similar way. <coughs> but one big difference is that the, the, uh, we cannot consider a case like a we use, like, let's say, utterance two is a training sample, and utterance one is a testing sample. It's for uh, it's impossible for okay. It's possible for humans to do in such a way that okay, let's hear first the training sample, and then we hear the testing sample. But in a sense, the task is not not like that. Task is to decide whether these two samples are from the same person. So it's there's no training and testing in a sense. There's only the, this decision has to be made. The, uh, the automatic system. The way, what we do is that we uh, we build a model from the from the target speakers' uh, utterances, and then we match against that one, and that is our our method of testing that that hypothesis that they are whether they are same or not. <coughs> yeah. So in forensic case, then the. Um, and the trace evidence is the one that is, in, is incriminating for a, for a person, um, which means that, okay, for example, it can be phone wiretapping where the person says that I have a drug and that blah, blah, blah. And okay, you can pick it up my drugs and so on. And then the utterance tool is the one that where, okay, so here in the trace, the uh, identity of a person is, is, is questioned. This, this a legal question whether who, ha, who, who is the one who is saying it. And utterance two is the one where the uh, identity is not in question. It's like uh, the, uh, it's known as cop, cop has been standing next to you and has been recording your voice. So there's no, there's no legal, legal case there. But there is a legal case. Who is, who is the one who is speaking there? Who is the in, in, incriminating evidence, the trace evidence? And how do you have access to utterance too, like in the case that the person is It's okay, it can be done for example that way that you have a okay in forensic case the, you have some suspects, mm -hmm. so you, you take a speed sample from all the suspects. And they can be taken for example in a in a police station <coughs> during the interview. So there's a copy's interviewing you and they know who you are, or at least who you claim to be, I and mean, in the sense that you have a the identity as well. <coughs> and now, so the one one question, of course, that comes up very easily is that whether you can fake your voice, because the uh, in this case you don't usually know that you have been recorded when you are talking to if you and your criminal buddies are talking to each other. I mean, you you are not thinking that you have been recorded at the time, but in a case when you are collect, if you are the the, the criminal, then the uh, the, the utterance too, you you are thinking that okay, maybe I need to change my voice and so on. I talked to a few foreign, uh, forensic phoneticians and they said that usually actually they won't change their voice. <coughs> but they, sometimes they try to do it and uh, they do some weird stuff with their voices and so on. <coughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, one thing is that the, the quality channel difference is very huge. Um, the, the trace evidence.